and run these things. So just being able to individually call it is a really good thing. And we'll go into more detail on that in the, on another day, but right now I want you to understand that if you're going to be doing anything, you've got to be careful of what type of script you're getting. And then usually if you open it and you see that like the syntax doesn't match up to what you know, then you automatically know it's probably for a different version of Python. And so we're actually going through this much faster because I had planned to go into like vocabulary later, but we can do that today. So I guess I'll add another one. So I guess today we'll cover a couple of bits of vocabulary. And these are kind of like the important things to understand when you actually have to um, do any coding with Python. So one of the first things you learn is what a variable is. So who's heard of this one? Can you describe it? Uh, a variable is a descriptor of what, what you're doing. Uh, basically, that's what it does. Variables, I can t show you what it is. I can, tell you. can you give me an example of a variable? A variable would be, I'll say print. That would be a variable. That be a function. A function, right. It's what you would add or whatever you're printing that might potentially be the variable, right? Right. So in this case, a variable is anything that can be changed or something that you can look at and it can change over time or can be stagnant or basically it's anything, let's say I can make a code and I need something done or adding in this case and I know that the numbers are going to change no matter what I do. So this is me asking for those two random numbers from the previous code I said. So if I put in two and two to be added together, I would have something in my code that would designate two as something and then the other two as something. That designation is what makes it a variable because I can call it whenever, wherever it is and it will always be equal to whatever I designated in the first place, which would be two. But what if I need, and then that goes to the same case if I change the numbers. If I'm adding seven plus three, the variable will change its quantity value to seven and three respectively, but I can still call it wherever it is, so long as I know the name of the variable or what it's called. So it's basically just for like calculations and things like that. Right. Okay. So the Could best it be an address. Hmm. Could be an address or a zip code. That's a variable. Right? Yes. So a variable can be several different things, and this is where the next word comes into play, or which is a data type. Because, let me ask the same, another question. Is a number and a letter the same thing? No. Correct. It is not. No. In terms one of is an integer, one is, uh, and numbers are, con are called integers. Right. Um, and, and, and letters are words. Yeah, a word slips. But they are different. And one is the integer. I know that for a fact. Right, so that's very good. So we'll say that the first one is a integer. And examples of this, these are specific types of numbers. Because I had to catch you, I almost caught you there. So stop me if I'm wrong when I get to something that does not sound like an integer. Zero, seven, 59, 2.3, eight. 2.3 is not an integer. Thank you. It is. A whole number. A whole number. It's not just a whole number. A whole number. It's because numbers that have to be divisibly evenly, am I correct? They not, they have to go in evenly to be divisible because there's another name for numbers with two point three and, and things like that. Right. They it have is another name for it. And that is thank you for catching that. So any number that has something like at the end of it, so let's say I divide one over three, that gives us like point three 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 repeating, right? The fact that there was a point three 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 part of it does not no longer makes it an integer. It makes it something called a float. That's correct. So when you do any math in uh, if you do any math in Python or actually in any other language, you will get run into this problem where they may ask you for integers as well as floats, mm -hmm. or if you do any math like two divided by three and you get a float, right. it automatically changes the data type. And this can be a big thing if you have to store information. Because if you're dealing with like one divided by three and you know it's got a trailing number, 
that can take up space. So being able to catch that and round it, for instance, actually can save a little bit of space when you're doing calculations. And so these are just like the major math, like number related variable types or data types. Questions? No, I'm thinking. Because numbers that floated, you had a float and then, I know Boolean, that's yes or no. Right. Yes or no answers. That's we can go into that next one. So. Okay, but is it a mold X? Uh, There's another one, and would you want me to put it up? Go ahead, please. It would be string. A string. A string is is the one with the with the letters. Exactly. With the letters, and then their 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 your differentiation come from the the not quotation mark single. Yeah, so single just the apostrophe quote. or not apostrophe. The quotes, it just be a single, single quote. quote. Single quotes tell the difference between, that's how you know to write a string or to write, uh, or if it's a string or an integer. And then in 2.7, I think you have to have either that one or the other one, you have to have parentheses around when you do the. Three is the one with parentheses. Okay. So that's the big thing. Intro, or three, Python 3, whenever you do functions, they're going to have you using parentheses. Usually with 2.x, you can just put a space just and then go on. There. Can you break down what the, okay, I was taking my notes and I was halfway listening. Sorry, sorry. C, can you break down? I haven't talked about that okay. yet. So. All right, so we just talked about integers, which are basically your whole numbers. It can be positive or negative, and it, but the only difference between it and the float is that it does not have a decimal point and anything falling after it. Okay. So you could technically turn an integer into a float if you want that for, for like consistency in your math or your coding, because you can turn it by just adding point zero, for instance. That automatically okay. turns it into a float. Exactly. Okay, so the float has the, okay. So an integer can be a float, but a float cannot be an integer. Yes, exactly. Right. Because that's when you have to round it up, which will make it exactly. Right. Okay. So the next data type is called a Boolean, and I cannot remember, like me, why, who came up with that. It's probably from a very old form of computer language. Unfortunately, I have did do my research on this one. But for art for the sake of class, what you need to know is that a Boolean refers to any true or false, true or false questioning, basically. So if you ever have to like do a comparison between something, and then you have to have conditions where you need to know if it falls with, under a specific category, you yeah. will be using Booleans. Okay, so that would be any any true or false statement. Yes, it literally uses the letters or the words true and false. Yeah. Note, if you use Booleans. And then specifically with the language of Python, it is a capital T R U E. Okay. Same with false, capital F A L S E. And that's for when you have to define something as a Boolean. Okay. And then you said, what is the string again? I'm sorry. And I'm about to get to that. Oh, I'm sorry. No, okay, okay. No, you're fine. And so, and our last major data type that we'll be talking about today is a string. Basically, if you ever have to write in words or like take in phrases or string or like a string of words, basically, you, you, this is what it turns into. When you have to write up, for instance, the most famous computing word or string of words, it's literally. Hello, world. Yep. Hello, world. And whatever language you learn, may it be C++, JavaScript, HTML, Python, in my case, MATLAB, which is what I started with. This is the first thing you learn to print. And it's important because it tells you this, how you set it up varies across each different language. For Python, and here, I'll let you guys do it. If you go to the shell, you're going to use your very first function, or built-in function in this case. It's called print. So if you type in print, P-R-I-N-T, lowercase, all lowercase, parentheses, and then uh, apostrophe, hello world. Does it make a difference between double quote and single quote? Actually, let me check because I actually have been using both interchangeably depending on where I was. No, of course it does. No, it does not. <laughs> so if you use print and you put in your parentheses, quotes, hello world, 
and then you press enter, you should get in the next line right underneath it, in blue language letters, hello world. That is the print function. Its job is to literally print strings no matter where it is. It just print whatever you put into the side of the parentheses. Did you do it in single or double? Either I works. did it in single and it worked. That's yeah, it works. Sense. Both work. Uh, it didn't start the quotes, if, if I can remember this. I, mean, I haven't done this in a minute. And I haven't practiced it, so. What the quotes didn't start making a difference until I think it was the 3x, and when you were writing certain types of quotes. Yeah, because when we have to use, for instance, apostrophes or anything along those lines, when you have to write a string, right. that's when it gets a little complicated because then you right. can close it on accident and you start getting errors. And when you put in, uh, when when you put in, uh, it works both ways. Like periods and exclamation marks, right. things like that. So punctuation. Punctuation. That's the word. It's whenever you start using punctuation, that's when things get a little tricky with strings because they can mean other things in this language. So, like for instance, if I told you to say math, to say two plus two, if you tried to do two plus two with, oh, and that's an, actually another thing I should be really specific about. You can turn any integer value into a string but it does not follow the same rules as an integer. So for instance, if I told you to write the words print, so put in print, and inside of it, I want you to put quotation marks, two, close quotation marks, then the plus sign, and then quotation mark, two, but do not press enter. You said two. So it should be like, This. So it should look like this. In this case, the twos are strings because they are in these quotation marks. This is what designates it, by the way. So I want your honest opinion. What do you think will happen if we press print? Like if we went through and pressed the enter button now that you have that in there? It exactly that. Quotation mark two plus. Or just print 2 plus 2. Print 22. I was just going to say, Rob, think 22. Right, so if you actually do press it, it gives you 22. Because it's not doing integer math. It's adding the strings together. The plus sign in this case puts strings together. If I had them by itself where it was just without this, what do you think it would do? Still give me 22. Would you? Still give me 22. Try it. Show what happens. So if you guys do it. Oh. What's wrong? So the thing that I am incorrectly here, like when I tried to do the hello world, you were actually doing nothing. No, right. So this is the uh, uh, format, right? What you're saying. Okay, cool. With Perfect. Python 3, all of your parentheses. But I do the question, I mean, yeah, the quotation, hello world. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I did? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what happened when you did it? I got four. Exactly. Print works in the print works differently for integers, floats, and strings. When you have to do any sort of math, it'll always do the math, math, cal uh, the math calculation because it is an integer and it has to be it's a math calculation. So it'll always print out the result. However, strings work in the way where if you have the plus sign, it means that you're adding two strings together. So you're putting them in sequence like a sentence. So for instance, if I have to like say this number is, I could put a break, the plus sign, and then I could put the value of that number there, plus another plus sign, and then I could put whatever any punctuation. Press the print button, and I've got a sentence that's a combination of the integers and a string, which is why it's a nice little feature. So it would say the answer is? The number, the, and then the oh. number. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you want to try that, for instance, it would be? That's what it looked like that. So this would be an example. I thought I would get 20. You having? No, I'm good. No, no, no. I'm paying attention to you. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, I'm trying to go fast. Tell me if I'm going too fast. They gave us 22 because it canceled out. You can see what I see because I have streamed it live. Oh, wow. So, so if you turn this computer yeah, on. Yeah, I was going to suggest that next. I'm doing okay. it now. Okay. But if you turn this computer on and go to the website yeah. and go to our YouTube live stream, mm -hmm. you can see what she's doing up there. But I was just saying for classroom's sake. We, she could see I can do it next time there. Happens. But what I'm saying don't matter. Yeah. Because I'm sitting here mm -hmm. and I'm feeling her. If she turns this computer on, everything she's doing will show up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore, she can work with a whiteboard, with the whiteboard, mm -hmm. and don't have to worry about trying to go back and forth. Yeah. So Instead, mm -hmm. it allows yeah. her the freedom. To teach. Yeah. Uh, now I'm really nervous. You're doing no. great. No. You're doing, great You're doing awesome. So I have, I have a question. This is a good trial run for you. Here, here's something I, I have a question about. Sure. Like you have where you, where you did a, mm -hmm. okay, because I'm actually writing down everything you're doing, mm -hmm. so they can see exactly what you're telling us to do. Right. Oh, okay. So in this string here, is that what you want to know? Yes. So I have the print okay. function again. Okay. And inside of it, I have the string. The answer is, then a space, and then closed, uh, quotation marks, the then a plus sign and two. The answer yeah. is, and then... Plus, this is a space. This means a space. Right. A space. Then you close the quotation, Down an addition sign, and then two. Down Okay. So, and then I hit in there. Okay. And so now, in the, you know what? I know what it is. I put double quotation, then I switch back to a single quotation. Right. Never mind. Okay. But here's my my next question. Right. Um. When we do. Uh. So he said the answer. I'm, I'm slow. Uh, I'm take the youngest person worry. in the room, so. No, take your time. So my, my question know, is, with this being. Sure. I didn't know. Uh, what, what, the way we did it. And, and I noticed that you did use the spaces. Mm hmm Okay, still give me, excuse me, oh. I keep messing up because now I put quotation at the end of it. So I got three hang. I got I got a hang on. So I type it correctly in a minute because I'm trying to slow my Again. Don't take don't worry. Um so the answer is why don't why didn't you use a comma? Well, you use comma you can use a comma. Right. However, I was taught when I was learning this that you can use addition signs as well. Okay. For instance, but also because of another thing. You can use print signs for if another type of syntax, and I'm not sure if that's too early to teach now. You know what, no, I'll teach it now. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to change something. Let's okay. say we have several variables that'll change. They're okay. completely different from each other. They're a string and two numbers. Okay. So, let me fix this for mine. So let's say, So let's say I have a string, or I have several variables that I myself am going to be putting in, uh -huh. or they're going to be taken in of, from like an input. Oh, sorry. So let's say the first one is my name. Okay. And that's a string. And then the next one is, I see my age. Uh huh. And that's, and that's an integer. Uh -huh. And then let's say um, the next value is just a random, a random float value. Okay. So then that'll be two point three. Okay. So let's say I want to print all these values in one sitting. The way we would do that is that once we've designated our variables, which are these three, mm -hmm. 
I can literally create a string that says, my name is, with space, and then I would put something to, as a placeholder okay. for this specific variable, which in this case I would say percent, a percent. Okay. Percent D. A mode. That's what I was trying to think of earlier today. Right. The, mod the modulo or modulo? <laughs> yeah, modelo or whatever they call it. Is it okay if I erase this side of things? Yeah, go right here. Yes. So let's say I make my sentence and it says, my name is, and then the first part of it. Okay. And then, I am, or, let me see, yeah, I'll do I am. My handwriting is terrible, as you can see. Space. And then I do another percent, D, for 24. Okay. Yeah. My number she just is and then the percent D. Fortunately, I don't have enough space here, but normally I would be able to fit it all on the, the shell or in my editor. Uh huh. And so I'm going to. This is completely separate uh, lang computer language. The dot 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 to continue to something else is, is what I do in MATLAB. Okay. I believe it is actually slash in uh, in Python. So you do a slash and then you continue it. That's correct. That's how you continue the next line. Right. And then after that, once I've actually, actually, I'm done with that, so I don't need this. Okay. This is where I would technically continue with a comma. And uh -huh. then I would make percent and then the order of my variables that I want to put in for each okay. one of these. So V1, V2, V3. And you're going to be doing double parentheses by, at the end of it because right. this is one section and then this closes it for section. this entire print. Yes. So if I print this entire string uh -huh. with all of these variables as well as the order in which I wanted to show up, I should get a string that says, my name is Jasmine, I am 24, but I should probably put I am 24 and then years old, and then my number is 2.3. Okay. okay. And then I would put this to separate between the fact that I'm doing the, that um, sep this uh, interchange here. Okay. Or the substitution, I should say. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So the way that you wrote this out is where it would still give you your. Uh, your integers and everything else and mm -hmm. not miscalculate the right numbers. okay so I use percent D because that's what I again that's for strings but I believe it might be another thing it might be percent F because if I'm using float and percent and I can't remember what it is for 24 off the top of my head I was going to teach this on another day that's why I'm that's sorry. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to jump jump the gun I, I didn't mean to jump the gun I, I would just some stuff is starting to come back to me, so yeah. that's, that's why I asked. Maybe I should have held that question. No, no, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Questions here, are appreciated. And you didn't, you didn't lose me at all, so don't feel like you jumped ahead. It's mm -hmm. a and, and one of the reasons that, that we're, we're going to be re recording these, not that you're not a great teacher and all and everything, but some of us, like me, are slow. And so I go back and, and look at this video again. And, and really start going through the notes and practicing mm -hmm. so that I'll be a little better when next class comes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure if I'm not speaking up, if I need to speak up, let me know. If I need to go back over anything. Oh, you're fine. Let me know. I can see. I can see your vocal, your vocal strength, the whole nine yards right here. Mm -hmm. if, yeah. if no issue with what you're doing whatsoever, uh, it's, it's just me getting better how to project you as you can see yourself over there. Oh how to gosh. project you? <laughs> how to project you better so that when people see us streaming live, that 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 they can uh, participate because, uh, as Kenyatta knows, we also can feel questions mm -hmm. uh, from from people who can't be here today, or they can put them on YouTube, and I give you access to it so you can see them All in right. case you had anybody that wanted to ask questions or anything, because one of the things that uh, I need to do uh, in the future 
possibly is to actually find a way to get it where we use your computer so that instead of me trying to do it, so when you go to the, uh, let's see, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So when we go to this page here, uh, so when we go to this page, you can't see it. Let's see, we should be seeing this. Oh, so full screen. I'm not connected to that. That's right, I'm not connected to dual screen. I'm oh, not so you'll be able to see his keystrokes and everything else. Yeah, right, the keystrokes. So the everything that you did on your computer, if we fall behind, we'll be able to, to see like, everything else. So like all the stuff that you there put it is, right there. to write out. Yeah. There oh, okay. So, so here you can see where I kept making an error on on the keystroke uh, as far as the page was concerned. So, so here is where I kept making an error on, on the page. So, I really can see it big on, on, on my page right now. Okay, okay. it's a little hard for me to see. Right, okay. but when you're at home, when, when you're at, when you're at home and you're and you're actually looking at the keystroke. So here I am here. Uh, when you're at home, you can see a little better. I know it's a way to blow it up. We usually blew it up inside the computer. Right. You can probably adjust the size of that somewhere in the settings. I haven't even uh, tried with that. Actually, I've been trying to do that where it says window and a zoom height. I've been trying to do it with Alt-2. Uh, alt alt uh, ah. It will not blow it up. Uh. I'll see what I can do. I can send you an email when I figure out how to do that for you. Well, I should be able to do it on my screen mm -hmm. uh, in itself. Yeah. I can control the screen size okay. with this program that I'm using. But anyway, so we can move on and, and move on. But I just want you to know that what you do as far as the keystrokes, stuff like that, I can see. We can see all of that. Okay. And, and maybe it's just, I don't know. we we'll figure it out. But for right now, you are, we're always like, right now we may be 30 seconds to a minute behind what they see. Mm -hmm. So the people at home, it always gives you a chance when you're doing it, they're following you. All right. So, like I just changed that. So Yeah, I kind of saw the delay. Yeah, great. there is a delay. All right. Well, I guess that, that figured out. I'll try to be less conscious of me being on the screen. <laughs> Um, but I saw that you had a question, actually. Yes. Yeah, so the the variables right go in the editor, mm -hmm. and so then that goes there, so the code connects that way. Right. So let's say I had, for whatever reason, I wanted to change this value, so that's different for everybody who does it. Mm -hmm. That's why I have this set up here. I can the variables are these things: v1, mm -hmm. v2, v3. What's inside of them changes. But these guys are always constant so that I can make a code and I can always refer to them in the code. Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, instead of me doing it, it was Don who put his name, his, uh, his age, and then his, his number inside of it, then all I could, I could pull the exact same code just with a different result each time. So you can, so the variables can go to however many, whatever. Mm -hmm. You can okay. use as many variables as you want, so long as you take into account, for instance, what you're doing. For instance, if I'm using V1, V2, V3 in this code, but Don's information is in a completely separate uh, group of three uh, variables, like right. V4 through V6, right. V6 right. I just have to make sure to change that where it is in the code. So I could do more than one print line. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can do multiple print lines. Okay. I can do something where it looks at the variable names, a number, and does a replace in the code so that it automatically updates and then does a print for you. It just, it takes time to actually get to that part of it, and I hope to teach you how to do that. And, but today I just wanted you to see how come it's important, why that, like, punctuation becomes important later on. So this is what you can do with variables in, like, just a print by itself. So now I want you guys to do this. So Let me ask a quick question. No question. Super says, my name is... Yes. Okay, percent D. Mm-hmm. Now... I got three percent D's right. on that one line, and mm -hmm. it, it it automatically says, "Okay, I'm gonna do the first variable." Yep. Second time it says, "Okay, I'm gonna do the second variable." Mm -hmm. okay. Right. okay. 
So the percent signs just designate where it is going to be added in, added in your print. What designates it, or the order in which it does this, is here. Right. So when you say, oh, I'm going to do substitutions, percent sign, parentheses, and then the order of the variables that you're doing, the actual substitutions. And it has to be the exact number, or you're going to run an error because you're either not doing the right amount, or you'll get something where you, like, it'll print it, but it might not be in the order that you want. So, so that, that, that one over there, where, that last one right there, mm -hmm. if I change that and put V2 in the last place, mm -hmm. it'll print V2 here. Right there. Okay. Yep. Right. So you have to be careful in the order or else it'll come out differently. Because it will print it, but it may not be the way that you want. So that's the reason why computer languages are both smart and stupid. Mm -hmm. right. You can do whatever you want, you can program to do whatever you want, but if you do not tell it to stop, it will not stop. By the way, is that all on one line, all the way? This, it, this is what this parenthesis, or the slash was for. This means that it's actually split into another line. Okay, okay. So you can even, you can even keep on and still use those same variables just as long as at the end. Like, let's say you want to add another sentence onto that, mm -hmm. sure, onto that string. Yes, you can. So what you, you could, what you, yeah, you could do it and still at the end, still put those variables if you want to change them. Right. In the, just making sure that within that string, you're doing it within the correct order. Right. Okay. So, yeah. if you want to print on the same line, that might be a little, that's well, you. Just, right. Yes. If you want to print two different sentences, if you want to put one sentence, mm -hmm. if you want to change this completely, that is up to you. Right. But you have to make sure that you do the right syntax, the right ordering variables, and then make sure that you use the right, uh, for, like, substitution, variable, substitution designations. So, those, big, okay, so... Those substitutions are just set. Mm -hmm. and you can't use anything else. Just the percentages are the only ones that you can use. Right. Okay. So the percent designates that you're doing a substitution because it correlates to this oh, guy okay. here. Right. 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 Okay. 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 Because outside of that, you wouldn't need, need it because it would be in there. Right. right. Because, okay. for instance, if I know for a fact that it's all my information, I wouldn't use that first percent. I'd just say my name is Jasmine, and then I'd right. just have this whole, whole taken out, and I wouldn't be using the right. last two. Right. And it's the plus percent. D, right? That's the whole... Right, this is the entire segment of your substitution. And this can be done in different ways. I use pluses. I've seen people who use actual commas instead of the pluses to designate uh, the space in between. Though, usually you do pluses when you're doing sequences. So what do you mean the space in between? So, uh, you see how I've got plus, then the substitution, and then another plus? Some people will do that where it's comma, then plus just because they want to make sure that they have that in their mindset. Okay. So, yeah, I want to do that. So yeah, just, if you want to, I suggest practicing it. Do something, do a short little, first make a variable. Like, just like, my name is such. Right. Okay. So, it'll be like, the one is equal to your name. That's why. I thought I made a mistake somewhere. S is a D, it is S. Is that an underscore after the is? Yes, that means space. Okay. So it's not an S, it's a D. I mean, it's not a D, it's an S? Yes. Okay. For string. I was trying to remember which one it was. Oh, so, so all those Ds need to be S's? Only for, I have to check that just because oh, to make sure that's the right number. It's, it's a numerical thing. I have 
That's if you wanted to change that as you typed. This is, I've designated it specifically as this. So for instance, if I'm like asking a question and you're supposed to respond to that in the code, uh -huh. that's when you would be using inputs. Okay. If I just have know what the variable is, I can just say v1 is equal to and set that as that. So here is. And that's why. So where do I write the v1, v2, v3 at? Down there? On the end? Yes. Of the code? I thought we did that in the editor. You can do this in editor or in the shell. What I did was that I just designated that we have variables. So okay. for instance, if we're doing this example and I'm going through now and realizing my mistakes, let me take that out. Write it in the editor out of clarity sake. Mm -hmm. If we write in the editor and let's say for instance you're making a code that takes inputs from the user, whoever runs the code. Okay. That's what you would use input. Okay. Because then they can add whatever it'll change. The variable quantity will change. Okay. If I know what that quantity is off the bat, I can just create the variable then and there and I can designate it like I did here as whatever it needs to be. So in editor. Mm -hmm. In the editor. In the editor, if you wanted to use input, you would say input. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I, I want to follow what you're doing. Oh. So the first thing that I would write to make sure, because people see what I'm doing, can see what I'm doing. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is write V1 equals Jasmine, and then go to the next line, V2 equals 24, mm -hmm. the next line. Right. And then the fourth line would be print. Yes. Okay. That's what I want. thing I miss being able to just press the up button and call all of this back whenever I make a mistake. Um, I'm not showing sure. you. So are you doing print? No, I'm not. I'm talking about stuff. Okay. My text is changing, so I know I'm coming across so, an error so okay. far. If you can look at this for me real quick. You see where mm -hmm. I was getting it fine, and as soon as I went for, is it because my line didn't break, I should have just kept typing here? You didn't need to actually put the break there. The break is there if you need to do it into two different sentences. Like if that runs over to here, and then you need to put it here, that's okay. when you do the break. That's, okay. how big your screen is for the editor, if you get to the very edge of it and you have to make another line, that's when you use the uh, slash. That's just because I got to the edge of the, screw, the board. So here, and that's when I did the slash. I removed that. So after my number is, if it doesn't break, do I just jump into the comma variable? Yes. Okay. If it doesn't break, you can just go straight to the comma. Space on on the V's. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Um, you don't have to put a space. Oh. It's just one whole variable, or just one whole thing.
Okay. Okay, so that's idle. So once I write it in idle, okay. then how do I get it to show up in my shell? So you're technically in you are technically in the shell. Okay. So this is me. Mm -hmm. Here. So once you got to this part and this is your script, you would save it. I will save it. I need to save it. Yes. Fine. When you make a script, you have to save it before you can run it. So I need to save as anything. Anything. So I'm just going to save it. Crash. P R A C. So test. And then you press press F five to run it. No, that's the same thing you use for. Uh, there it is. There you go. Restart studio. My name is. Ah, you're saying you made a mistake somewhere. Okay. Because now it didn't. Cause it got to all the substitution, and it should have done substitutions right after. So now you have to refer back to the editor. Okay. So I need to go back to the editor. And so now we look at it. Where do you think you made a mistake? Because I think you forgot something really important. Here. Remember, what do you have to have before it? Slash. Not the slash, the comma. Not the comma, the Crap, my name, man. So I got that. Her. Percent sign. Mm -hmm. Because if there's no percent sign, it doesn't know to substitute those things right after it into. So I have percent sign there, percent sign there, and percent sign there. But? I don't have it here. Right, before. This is where you're doing substitutions, remember? Right here. Mm -hmm. So I have before here or in there? Before it. Out before the parentheses. So I need it uh, there. Mm -hmm. So I put my percent sign in there. And you save it. Okay. Uh, I have to save it. And then let's run it. And then F5. Invalid syntax. And there. And there too. So then Now I'm in three. Okay. Like you. Yeah. You want me to be three. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think what it could be. I, I'm doing it again to save it. Just because it didn't work the first time. So you want that? I'm trying to think of what the problem is. It could be because he's right now doing the DM. 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 The so what we're looking to do is figure out what V2 and V3 should be mm -hmm. with the percent sign. Right. Because if you take out everything after my name is and then the first percent sign S, uh -huh. and then take away the other two variables, this should run. You okay, said cause, percent sign Because it did it's show, because Jasmine I mean, is showing, right. it's going, my name is, because the V's, it's showing the V's. You just squeeze it in. I don't know. Right. You, you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It is showing in the in 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 our work. Mm -hmm. It is showing the V's. Right. So. But it is not showing them in our. Mm -hmm. It is coming up like that's in addition to the V's are showing up in the end when it when in fact the V's should not be showing up. The V's on the end yeah. should not be showing up. What should be happening is the question should be answered. Right, so my name is, and then percent sign, and then whatever V1 in this case is. So this should work. That should work. But what's coming up with mine that we typed out? Because of the V2 and V3. And that's V2, 1, V2, V3, that's what's showing up. Right, and that's because of the fact that I'm pretty sure it's these guys. I don't know what the change is for this guy, and that's why I'm sitting here thinking. Sorry. Sorry. No, 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 no. We're learning with you, so it's okay. <laughs> we, that's what happens when, you know, it's a part of it. So when you saved, 
is my question now. Am I just hitting file save? You got to give it a name. Right. I have to save it. So give it like give just a, a test or practice. I gave mine a test. Okay. And then you hit F5. Okay. So, so if you create file, And then hit F5 after a save. Okay, mm -hmm. and then first call the designated it show up. I did it here. I so the actually it correctly, so I mean, I did it here, you know, when, yeah, when it changed the file name. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can use a script like this. And but you got help, right? It designated in mm -hmm. So why not? So this has its own, like, brain. I see. Exactly. Okay. So like, this is the form. See, brain. this reminds me. Right. Right. When I did, uh, when I was doing launch code, mm -hmm. and we had to do Either it, we, had, we had one just like this. Okay. okay. And when we did it like this. Okay. Yes, so. thank you. Mm -hmm. And this should work then. I, I, I think what we was doing was Python, and then we, we were just playing with Python that day just, just to figure it out. So let me ask you And this, we got stuck after we did the pig lead, and we jumped into something else trying to follow the video. But we didn't understand because the man inside the video didn't so give us. We couldn't ask oh, questions. That's pretty much it. Now it's right. <laughs> so, if you want to email us, by you would press email after you something. made your changes. Mm -hmm. And since we're only doing up to I just here, email me a book. Okay. 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 Jasmine, we're writing a statement, right? So what is that? Yes. This is a statement. Semicolon. This is a and statement. Then you press so this is a statement with tuples and lists or strings. Okay, here it is. I got your answer. Okay. I have a book right here. What, what you have, here, you come look at it, you can decide who's better than me. Okay, here's something similar, exactly almost what you wrote. Mm -hmm. So here you got, you wrote print, right? Yeah, and that's in 2.7. Okay, print, name, and then you get name, your, your percentage, S. Mm -hmm. Okay, then it says size. And then it says percentage D factor, and then the, the this right here mm -hmm. was 3.4 F. Mm -hmm. Then you had this, then you had the percentage, and then it had name, size, factor. So that would be V1, V2, V3, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, but you have your percentage there, which is what you did. There was a space. And then here, here are the three things that we were identified. Mm -hmm. You had print, so we would put, say we put our prints the same there. Yeah, that's where it's and, supposed to be. Right. And then name, we did that, just like you did. Mm -hmm. Okay, name is, but they don't, you, then you didn't have anything. Name, then we had S, you got that. Mm -hmm. And then size, 
Uh, you got that with space in between it. Oh, I'm starting to see what you're talking about because it turns into a. F okay. You see what I'm saying? Yep, I see. Let me see if I can work, change it real quick. thing that you don't have, mm -hmm. you know, what, what you don't have in there, instead of the double quotation inside of it, mm -hmm. it's only a single quotation on the end. But see, we did that online. Mm -hmm. We did the online same with the student. But, uh, but what I found in this book is what she actually wrote here, pretty mm -hmm. much. So she's making an adjustment. See if that works. Right. And if it does, I'm having, okay, 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 hmm, because it works on my laptop, but I'm having the same issue, okay. So it works on your laptop? Yeah, it's been working on my laptop, but. You don't have a two-point version download. No, I'm running 3.6, that's why. Okay, I am too. So so what you wrote on the board works? And that's why I'm confused then. Oh no, this is real the entire class because it's supposed to work like that. Mm. No, 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 take your time. I'm searching myself to see if I can find it.
Unless it's, it couldn't be that. That would be so long if it is. Tell me, I keep going back to the same thing. I'm seeing, <coughs> looking at all these old formats and everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting that I'm telling you guys the right thing to do. You know what? You know what I noticed. The file name did not change. Did you not save it right? I did save it right, but the file name for the uh, in in idle, mm -hmm. the, I'm looking at it says restart user student application local programs Python, and it says test.py. Yeah, that's the script that you're running. Okay, but I open up a new idle. Mm -hmm. Remember, I changed it. It is, and I saved it as a different name at test2.py. Did you open test.2? So, do I have to reopen it? Yes. Whenever you close it, it closes everything that was uh, attributed to the previous okay. uh, shell. So, I have the, pre the new shell open, and then I am going to F5 that one. It's still saying invalid syntax. And it's showing me what the invalid syntax is. Guess which one it is? What? The one where it has the percent sign before V1, V2, V3. 
So should there not be a space? That's what I think we do an idea that. So I says, okay. So that's my biggest. That's my biggest. All right, well, there's another way to do it. Because I'm seeing that it only seems to happen whenever you try to use numerical values. String values are fine, completely fine. That's what I was trying to show you. So if everybody, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Restart everything. So save whatever you're working into mm -hmm. your file, in, its, uh, in the editor. Save it. Mm -hmm. And then close shell and then reopen it. We're going to start from scratch. So that's my other question. Mm -hmm. You know how it says close shell? Yes. So if I go file and I hit new, mm -hmm. it doesn't have all the different information at the top. The new one, the new shell does not. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Mm -hmm. So if I go, set me the control in. That's because you opened another script. That's another script. Mm -hmm. So, but what if I get file, new file? New script. New script. So, what you want to do is exit out of that. Okay. Then you go to file. Uh huh. And you play, press exit. Exit. And that closes that. And then you we're doing it restart again. So then you're gonna open, go back to. So I couldn't like so. So I couldn't just close that, where it would just start a new page. Right. You no, can't just start a new page like a word document. Right. You got to start a whole new. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's try this again. Can you hold on one minute? Sure. Mom, antivirus situation. One second. Instead of instead of using uh, integers, you just want to use strings. Yes, just to test and make sure that everything's all right. Okay. And I don't want shell. I want idle, right? Right. So we okay. We just need to use. Delete the comma the next time you run it. Delete the comma? Yep. So. Between the percent and the last quotation. Delete that comma. So here. Yes, that's it. Thank you. It was the comma. Yep. It was a comma. Yep. So no comma. No comma. <laughs> and the the v both of them. I'm about to test the num the numerical version of it. So really, what you wrote was correct because it didn't have the commas in it. You don't she know you guess. <laughs> so in the v one, v two, v three, no commas. Yeah. We don't know yet. I'm about to check check that okay. now. The bed, bath, bath, and beyond. No, uh, bath and body works. Yeah. So getting checks. So this works and this works. Now we see if B three works. 
Because it might have just been the comment, I'm going to be really upset. Hey, that's the, what's, what's your coding. favorite phrase? It's coding. It's coding. It's coding. Punctuation, capitalization. Punctuation, capitalization. <laughs> Each and every time. <laughs> Still be in my classroom all the time, Nick. I feel like punctuation, capitalization. It's your line. Something is wrong that you did in there. <laughs> I'm sitting there. One stupid period. Yep. Yes. It's the comma. <laughs> it was the comma. So, okay. So. What was the comma? The comma was between the percent sign and then this where the break was, so it been right after the end of this. I didn't have a break. There's no break, this was just because I didn't have enough room up here to write it all but out. what I'm saying is, I didn't have a break. <laughs> but you had a comma, I bet. I'm still working on it. Okay, so. Oh, it, 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 it. If it's all green like this, that means that you didn't close this. So that means that you need to put Let's see, guess what? It worked. No, it didn't. Yes, it is. It's a show. You have two inches as it opens. See? It's a full show. Okay, that's because I used, no, but I, what I'm saying is, I used, I knew it was all green. It's going to be all green because I hadn't hit this yet. But what I'm saying is, it's going to be all green because I didn't use integers. Oh, okay. But this is all. Oh, I just noticed. This is all okay. passes. But now if you run it You're with the point. integer combined, it should work. Don't put it. No, I did the whole okay. thing. So don't put a comma yeah. where? Between <laughs> here and here. This last quotation mark, or yeah, that last quotation mark and this percent sign. Do not put a comma there. I never had a comma. On oh, my last, when I, when I say the what? In your script? If I go back to file and I open my old script, test. I got it. I got it. I got it. You have a comma. Yes. So you said if I get rid of that. Oh. And I hit F5. Oh, no. You think you have to change this oh, I side to D. Save it, but change that I to a D. Okay. Change the I to a D. Yep. Okay. So and now you save it. Could so. you close that point? Just hold it. Checking your code now. Yeah, I thought so. We getting closest. Now to do it. So, yes. something so is right and wrong. something Say. is wrong. Say, would you like to run it with that button? Because mine ran correctly. There you go. There Come you on. Go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, I got it. Okay. Yes, so, I got it. okay. So you see how this is all green? Yes. Mm -hmm. You forgot to put one of these. Uh, this guy in the wrong place. That guy's in the wrong place. Yep. It, it should go. go. Right here. Help you. It should mm -hmm. have been by the D. Right yep, over. after the D. This is the outside of the section of it. I got a video. I just figured this whole thing was a good one. I know you did. You can probably just copy all of that and then just put it out right there. I'm the only one who saved my own life. So. It shall set you free. Yes. Mm, right there by the D? Yeah. Yes. And then you press enter. I ran both codes. Both codes, mm -hmm. one with the S and one with the okay. integer. See? That's how I'm saying. Just stay over there. Oh, yes, Don, tell her to stay in her chair. That's right. That's right. Just stay in your chair. That's right. And, and do not use also, uh, Rudolph. That's okay. right. With his red nose. Okay. So there's no space needed there. An SD. And if your number is. What's your V3? Did you define V1, V2, and V3? That's the other problem. So this works, so I, but you make sure you can find V1, V2, V3, and they have to be commas in between each. Uh, oh, I thought the commas were what needed to be taken out. Uh, Not okay. in this section, okay. just in here. Okay. And the other thing is that you're doing like S, D, and F. S is for strings, D is for integers, F is for flows. Okay, okay, okay. So my string is here. Yep. So my string. This was this one was right. Right. Well, that would be your name, right? Uh, yeah. You and did you, you, you don't have to put your name here if you're already going to be inputting that in. Okay. So 
and then D is your number, number or your age, oh, and then D is your favorite little uh, float number. Okay. So then that's what you would be defining in this next one. Control C, and then you're going to find B1, B2, B3 here. So B1 is equal to B3. Uh, no. Well, so if you want like it to be equal to your I'm name, right? Okay. So I'm just writing your name as a string. I'm, I'm okay. writing to do a couple more. Oh. Uh, is the parentheses in So V1 is equal to, and then. Okay. Well, I have plan on going off of July. As a string. I'm it now. I mean, we're just doing this right here, right? Yeah. So. And then do I write the. Close it. Yeah, or close it. And then press enter. The so now. July already. Do you, keep, you put a space in between there? You know, I think I did. So you don't have to put a space there. You can just uh, write it as they is. They got a new malware that just rolled out, mm -hmm. and this one will take on corporations. So, so, so yeah, so you don't need to put a space as soon as you do it. You can just press two. two. It's equal to, and then your number will be your age. And then you press enter. And then I need to know. Um, no, because it's the difference between a string and an integer is that this is actual just a string of words. It's maybe okay. a sentence. Okay. These are just numbers that are going to be added up, or you do math. Okay. And then B3 is our float number, which is going to be. You remember what a float is? The, um, it's the broken down number. Right, it's going to have decimal point, and it's going to have something at the end of it. So it can be whatever uh, number you want, as long as it has. Well, I didn't even know what the other number was. I thought we were just doing our age. So what would push it right down? I mean, you can put whatever you want. So like, let's say um, 0. 0.9. There, that's okay. your flow. And then you okay. press enter. And then you put in your print string. And I unfortunately recopied this when I do this. So I'm going to put in my name is percent S. Okay. So I still put in my right column. So no, I did not. And then percent S. Oh, percent S. Because we're doing the substitution. Okay. So you don't need to put your name in, you just need to put the parts that you're substituting in. So my name is, and I'll be substituted with this first one, space. I am. And then since we're using an integer, it'll be what? To B2. It'll be V2, but what is V2 considered to be? It is a variable. Not, it's a variable. What type of? What's the data type? If it's a number, it's a, uh, it starts with an I. Integer. <laughs> right. Okay. So what is that? Correlate? Which one? What percent are we using? Percent S. Percent D. Or percent okay, F. Thank you. She been she been creating two cents. Right. <laughs> if we're using an integer, are we using percent S? That's percent D. Or uh, percent F. That's what her. Or D. Right. Okay. So you want to put yeah, I percent D. I am percent D. Yep. Right. Okay. Okay. And, and then you would put space. My number is. And then are we so using S D or F for this last one? Oh, I thought you wanted to put on the web. This is a what? Uh, integer. It's an it's a no, type. It's a variable type. It's a variable type. It is a number. Okay. Upload. Right. Yeah, so so we're going to use S D or F. Right, because okay. it is yeah, a look. Okay. So then I put in percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Space. Yeah. 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 No, no, like, trust me. Coding. Like, all those moments. Yeah. 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 So now that we have this part, put space, percent, parentheses, and then V1, comma, V2, comma, V3, close parentheses. Close parentheses again. Now press enter. Okay. That means that this is closed. No, it was it oh. B2, 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 B3. Okay. And then if we do it, there you go. You're the best. No, you're the best. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Rebecca. Hi, Stop rubbing it in. <laughs> okay, so now that we figured out what was going on, we now know that the reason why we had a problem was that we had a comma in the wrong place. You do not need to use commas except for here, as we just found out. We found out also that the what you do for substitution depends on which letter you use here. And I should actually make another change here. If we are using a string, we use a percent %s or percent %string as for substitution. 
if we're using a integer, we use percent D. And my only conclusion, or my way that I correlate that is D for double. If you don't know the language, double also counts as what an integer is. So D correlates to integer. And then if you're using a float value, so like 2.3, you use percent F. Mm -hmm. So once you've made your string line or, or whatever, in this case, it would have gone up to here, and then I had my break. It will jump down, do not put a comma, just put your percent and then your values in another set of parentheses, and making sure to separate each of them with a comma. Oh. Okay, so S is a string. Yep, percent S for string. And then the D is for integer. Is for integer. Okay. And then the F is for float. Oh. So now we actually cover. Oh. Okay. So now that we've. Oh, do you have another question? Okay. But, okay. Mm -hmm. You can catch me after this, and we can talk about it. Okay. Um, so, just wrap to wrap up everything. Today we actually covered quite a bit, more than I was planning, but we covered it. We intro introed into Python. We found the differences between it and Python three, which we saw when we were trying to do the, solve this last problem here. Comparisons to other languages, and we found that Python is actually much easier to understand and to use later on if you ever have to leave it for whatever period of time. We actually covered the data types. We covered the differences, the differences between the two major math uh, data types, which is the integer and the float. Does anybody remember what those are? Well, what was the range integer range. and float. Oh, the float was the, the broken down, like the, the decimals and right. parentheses, and the integers was the solid numbers. Right. So it would be like, ne they can both be negatives or positives, but the difference between, main difference is that integers do not have the decimals and any numbers after it. Floats do. We also covered Booleans, which I will talk about more later in, the, in this course or what I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. And we also covered strings, which is this last major part of it. And strings are just sequences of words normally. So the last thing that I taught you was how to use the function print, which is if you ever have to print just anything in general to say something in a code, you would use print. And our example being is if I wanted to say my name, my age, and some random number, I would say my name is Jasmine, my name, or I am 24, and my number is some value that I chose. In this case, I chose you, showed you two different ways to do this. The first was if you used print, then you say, my name is some space value, plus your variable, or if you know what you want to put in, you would just put it in. In this case, I know my variable is v1. And if I pressed it, I would have gotten, my name is Jasmine. The other way is to do a substitution, where I use percentages to designate where in my breaks, or in my sentence, that I want a substitution to occur. The main thing with this is that, Whichever one, whatever data type that you're doing the substitution is, you designate it with a specific letter. S is for strings, D is for integers, F is for float. And at the end of the whole, after you've made your, uh, your string, and you close it off in your, uh, pop, sorry, your quotation marks, you put a space, you do a percent sign, and then you open up another set of parentheses, and then you designate the order that you want your variables to show up. So in this case, my name, my age, and the number I chose. So when you print this entire line, you should see my name is Jasmine, I am 24, my number is 2.3, and then you see a set of zeros right after. And that basically covers what we did today. You taught us the difference between the two uh, screen looks. You taught us idle and shell. Oh, right, that's, that was intro. So the other thing I forgot to mention is I taught you the difference between the idle and shell as well as editor so whenever you need to make a script you should be able to go to the top of your shell to file and press new file to create a new blank uh, script page and that you can save and then call later and if there's anything right and then F5 and if you've ever finished your script after you've saved it under any sort of name that you want anywhere that you can call later or get to later you can press F5 in the actual editor, and it will run your script. And I think now I've covered everything that we've done today. If you
have any more questions, please let me know now or after class. And thank you. Thank you. You did awesome. Okay. Sorry, did I pick up?